Welcome into the Alana Enquirer podcast, and I, like every other person in the Champagne media, is hitting this guy up this week. It's Alec Bussey, uh, University of Illinois graduate, so he knows this team well. He's covered this team before uh, for Rivals, Orange and Blue News dot com, and of course now he covers Iowa State for Cyclone Alert, part of our great twenty four seven Sports Network. Welcome to Boston, Alec. I'll, I'll see you later today at TD Garden. <clears throat> but your two worlds colliding here. What's this like personally? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, I was telling a lot of people in Omaha that I don't think I actually wanted it to happen just because it's like an awkward position. Like you get it with message boards and everything. It can be a little awkward, but it's been a lot of fun being able to hop on shows with you, being able to go on a show in Chicago, um, a couple other podcasts and different things. And it makes it really easy for me. I don't have a lot of research to do on a Iowa State Sweet 16 opponent because I know so much about Illinois, like you said. Um, so that's certainly a benefit as well. What, what has it been like covering this Iowa State program? What have you learned about this program, not just this team, but Iowa State, its fan base, uh, and just the, the proud history it has? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I think coming into the year, I don't think that there was expectations that they would be a number two seed in the NCAA tournament and, and you know, finish second in the Big 12, which was probably the best conference in the country again this year. Um, I think the biggest thing I've learned about Iowa State is, you know, their fans are awesome. Like, they have a great understanding of, what they are, what their expectations should be. They're super appreciative of the athletes, the coaches. Um, and that can be rare in today's like college athletics landscape. I mean, um, I, I like use Kentucky basketball as an example right now. Like there's a very large segment who maybe rightly want John Calipari fired, but then it's like you throw names out there of like who they could hire and they all, they hate every name. Um, yeah. So like some fans just can never be happy, but I think I would say fans are so happy with, the basketball program and TJ Otzelberger and they love Matt Campbell as well on the football side and what he's done for them and turning a historically pretty down program into a team that's routinely going to bowl games. So TJ Otzelberger, this is a second sweet 16 in three years. I believe the first Cyclones coach to ever get to two sweet 16s. How did this team get there? How, how did he get this team to be a number two seed and make the sweet 16? Yeah, it all starts on the defensive side for them. And I think a lot of people have kind of figured that out at this point. And anyone can log on to Ken Palm and see they have the country's best defense. But their defense is so, so relentless. Um, and I, a lot of people maybe don't like watching Iowa State because they don't love watching defense. But, Jeremy, you're going to get an opportunity to see a defense that plays like very few others do in the country on a, on Thursday night if we're able to stay up with past midnight because i'm sure you're a big fan of the tip-off time yep. um but they uh they're just so relentless with their ball pressure and they're so um active in the passing lanes and it leads to improved offense this year the past two years their offense was you know more or less unwatchable it ranked outside of the top 100 on ken palm and also first year i think it was like 172nd in offensive efficiency you know how hard it is for a high major team to rank that low in offensive efficiency but they did and it was good enough for them to, you know, be, I think, 7-11 and 11 in the Big 12 in his first year and advance to the Sweet 16 after beating, um, I think, LSU in the round of 32 that year. Maybe it was around a 64. But this year's team has improved offensively from where it has been in the years past. They have improved shot makers. Taman Lipsy's improved greatly as a shooter this year. He went from an 18% three-point shooter a year ago to about 30 to 33% this season. Keyshawn Gilbert's a really good bucket getter for them at the guard position. And then, Milan Momsilovic is one of the most crafty and skilled freshmen that you're probably going to see in the country. Uh, I hate to like make this comparison because it's not fair, um, but he kind of plays like Dirk. Like he's got some Dirk to him with his footwork, his shot mechanics, um, and he kind of self admits it too. It's like he kind of sees those. If you get a chance to talk to Milan about it, he'll kind of say like, "Yeah, there's some there's some similarities to it there," and I think all of that has combined for the offense being a lot better than it's been in the past, but the offense is also better because it plays off of the defense really, really well. And I think that, you know, you combine those two things, you've got a team that in a big 12 that was still really good this year, but maybe not as good as it's been in the years past with Kansas being a little bit down, um, you know, Texas not being as good as they were a year before was good enough to finish second in the big 12. And, um, you know, now they're here in the sweet 16. Obviously, Illinois lacks that true point guard, so that is going to be tested against Iowa State, and, and there's not a lot – I mean, there's not really a team in the country quite like Iowa State, let alone the Big Ten. I mean, Penn State's probably the closest, and we, we saw how that went for, for Illinois. Uh, it's a different kind of pressure, right? It's not like full-court pressure. It's more this trapping, really aggressive in the half court. Um, so what do you think Illinois has to do? Like, what, 
what have teams, not many teams have been successful because I saw Washington State handle it for 15 minutes, Alec, and then all of a sudden uh, they just wore them down. Like Iowa State's pressure just kind of wore them down. So what does Illinois have to do to, to handle that and give themselves a chance against this defense? That's the thing. Like no one's been able to handle it this year. And I think one of the reasons it's so difficult for them to handle uh, Iowa State's opponents is because – you can't practice against it. Like you just can't replicate it in a scout. Um, and as someone who like watched Illinois a good amount last year and this year, like I think it was a big perk of having Sincere Harris because he can just be a big pest on the ball in practice right. um, this week. But you need like four other Sincere Harrises uh, to do it effectively. Um, so I would imagine this week in practice that Harris has spent a lot of time guarding Marcus Damas, Terrence Shannon, um, because that's kind of the most similar thing that they have to Taman Lipsy and Keyshawn Gilbert with the ball pressure. I think what's going to be really interesting to me, and I know that Illinois has kind of gotten a little bit away from booty ball in the last couple of weeks, is Marcus Damask and his ability to not turn it over. Um, I know it's something that he's been really good at this year, but again, he hasn't seen a ball pressure that Iowa State puts on people. The only team that's comparable is Houston in the country, and I think Tennessee does a really good job of it, But and the offense was a little bit different then. But um, the biggest key for me is, can Illinois not turn it over? And I don't think that they're going to be able to get into a ton of booty ball action. I don't know if they're going to be able to get the ball into the paint the way they have been able to in recent games, just because of how good Iowa state is at cutting off driving lanes and how good they are, at, you know, stuffing the paint. And, and even when they do allow teams to get into the paint, especially if Hassan Ward's in the game, they have an elite rim protector. Um, mm-hmm. Someone who's six foot 10 and, and a really good shot blocker, but it's just a havoc defense that puts a lot of pressure on offenses and makes them really uncomfortable. Is there anything that you think this Illinois offense, the number one offense in the country, can do to make Iowa State's defense uncomfortable? Shoot it. Shoot it well. Um, it, I think coming into the year, right, like there was a huge expectation that this Illinois team was not going to be a very good shooting team. And I don't think they're an elite shooting team by any metrics, but they are a pretty good shooting team. Um, they shoot the three well. They're what, like a 35% three-point shooting group? And they take a high enough volume to where they can make enough threes. And Iowa State will allow teams to shoot the three well against them or at least shoot a high number of threes so if terrence is shooting it well from three if luke goody is shooting it well from three like he did in omaha marcus has come around since the start of big 10 play and obviously coleman has proven to be a pretty good three-point shooter this year i think that could really hurt iowa state defensively because they'll they're willing to allow teams to make the three and um you know brad underwood's got a much different analytical approach to playing defense than iowa state does his is four tough twos don't allow layups or threes and Iowa State says, we'll allow you to shoot threes because we're going to force a ton of turnovers and it's going to lead to layups on the other end. And it's it's very interesting to kind of see those two different yeah. analytical defensive styles approach. But, yeah, if Illinois shoots it well and doesn't turn it over a lot, I think that they're going to have a pretty good opportunity to win. It's just one of those things where they turn a lot of people over a lot. Yeah, no, best at it in the country. So offensively, um, I mean, Iowa State's an offense not as much of a machine as Illinois, but – uh, they could probably Illinois defense is not the machine that Iowa State's is. So, what issues could Iowa State give uh, Illinois with their offense? Yeah, they don't do anything very creative offensively, and I know a lot of times Iowa State fans maybe get frustrated with that. There's been times where I've like turned to different people on press row. I'm like, this is just brutal what they're trying to do. At the same time, though, I often say that like I think the national rap that their offense gets is fairly unfair, like. It's not the offense of the last two years. It's a top 50 offense in the country. It has been for most of the season. There was about a month-long stretch, three-week-long stretch at the end of the regular season where it slipped down to like 60 or 70 in Ken Palm's OER ratings. But in the postseason, it's gotten up, um, back up into the top 50. And what they do a lot of offensively is trying to get their guards into the paint and allow them to kind of create for teammates, whether that's kicking to Momsilovic on the perimeter, kicking to Curtis Jones on the perimeter. Both of those guys can make shots um, or Lipsy or Gilbert will try and force a layup up. Um, So I think that, you know, that's where it all kind of starts for them. Curtis Jones off of the bench for Iowa State is super valuable. Um, He didn't get any Big 12 mention uh, from the coaches. The Big 12 doesn't do a media poll at the end of the year. He wasn't even an honorable mention. Um, didn't win sixth man of the year, which I kind of think he was unfairly robbed of, to be honest. I thought he deserved at least an honorable mention. Um, he's a pretty good shooter. Shoots about 33, 34% from the perimeter. 
And the biggest thing, and there's not a way to grade this, but I feel like he's such a big clutch shot maker for Iowa State. Uh, they obviously didn't score for like the first six minutes, score a field goal for the first six minutes against Washington State, and he stepped in to hit a huge three. Um, later in the first half, he hit a three to tie the game at 25. In the second half, he had a couple of more big shots against Washington State to kind of help Illinois pull away just a little bit. And he's really important for them. Mom Sulevic is someone who can score at all three levels. Now, I think Illinois will be happy to let him take his, his mid-range twos, his fadeaway jumpers, all those things. I mean, I think any coach would be happy to let a guy take those. You just have to understand if you're an Illinois fan that he may convert on 40% of them. Um, but I think that that's a really good opportunity for Coleman Hawkins to match up with him, given his length, given his athleticism. If Quincy Garrier kind of brings it, which I know has maybe been a struggle for the last couple of months since his big streak of double doubles, um, I think that could be a capable matchup for Quincy Garrier as well. But yeah, I think it's one of those situations where their offense doesn't do anything overly impressive, but if Illinois can't stop their dribble penetration, if if Terrence struggles on the ball, if Ty Rogers struggles on the ball, they're going to struggle um, a little bit more than I think Illinois fans maybe realize on the defensive side. How is Iowa State uh, in transition defense? Because obviously Terrence Shannon is is on one there. He usually gets 10 points that way, 10 points at the free throw line. Um, do they have the type of transition defense to slow him down? Yeah, they're capable in transition defense. They really struggled against BYU on the road earlier this year. They lost by like 15, um, but BYU is an interesting transition defense um, to match up to. They don't um, – BYU doesn't attack in transition to get layups or dunks. They attack in transition space the floor and hit a three, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is kind of funny. But uh, they, they play better against TCU um, in, in transition defense. TCU is a team that plays – um, some of the fastest in the country. They're the fastest team in the Big 12. Uh, I would say one on the road at TCU, 73-72, but they nearly blew a big lead, but Tame and Lipsy didn't play that game because of a shoulder strain that he suffered in the loss at BYU. And then they also beat TCU 71-59 in, uh, in Ames, and they were better that game, I thought. Um, I was a little bit concerned with the way that they would play against Baylor in the Big 12 tournament. They were better against Baylor um, than I anticipated, but I also just don't know if I think Baylor was actually that good this year. They were good. They weren't great. Uh, th- they're a fine transition defense. They don't they don't have any elite athletes to like run with Terrence Shannon, but I don't think that they have um, you know a bunch of poor athletes that can't run and keep up with Illinois in transition. I just think that Illinois is elite in transition offensively. So if Illinois is able to you know get defensive rebounds and go and outlet passes, they're going to get buckets on the other end. All right, you know these two teams really well, so give me an X factor for each side. Yeah, I think for Illinois, um, there's two for me. And I kind of hinted at it a little bit earlier. Uh, To me, it's it's Marcus Damask and being able to handle ball pressure. If he's able to do that, I think Illinois could actually do do an okay job uh, offensively. If they don't – if he has less than, you know, three, four turnovers, I think that Illinois offense could be in a pretty good spot just because he initiates so much for them. And I think the other one is, is Coleman Hawkins able to do the same thing while also being able to hit shots. Because right. I think Iowa State will let him shoot it a little bit. Um, Rob Jones will play in a deep drop coverage, I would imagine. But he'll also um, you know, step out to the perimeter if he has to. Hassan Ward will do the same thing. If Coleman shoots it well, which he's obviously capable of doing, I think Illinois' offense could have a pretty good day. Um, on the defensive side for Illinois, like I said, I think it's stopping dribble drive. It's keeping Keyshawn Gilbert. It's keeping Tim and Lipsy out of – out of the paint. So Terrence is going to have to be really good on whichever one of those two he guards. And I think he's probably going to switch between the two of them. Um, and I think the other X factor there would then be Ty Rogers, who probably matches up against the other one. And you could see Justin Harmon when he's in the game match up there. You could see Damask maybe take one of them. Um, I don't think you'll see Luke Goody do that, but I think that you'll see any combination of two or three guys end up guarding Lipsy and Gilbert. For Iowa State, um, I think it's keeping Illinois out of the paint. They do such a good job of sticking to their principles defensively. And I hate to make this like a coach speak thing because I hate it when people do that, but that really is what it is for, for Iowa state defensively. It's keeping people out of the paint and sticking to their principles because their principles are so unique and, and a real challenge for opposing offenses to match up with. So I think if, I think if Iowa state's able to do that on the defensive side, they're going to be in a better position because then Illinois is forced to maybe throw up some threes that they don't want to. Um, I'm trying to think, like, um, who's a team? Nebraska, the game in Champaign, where they just kind of, like, threw up a ton of threes. I think that that's something that 
you don't want to see Illinois do. When they play kind of inside out and they get to the rim and then that opens up the threes for Illinois from the perimeter, I think that's when their offense is really at its most successful. Well, we got a heck of a stacked region here. Defending champion UConn with the defending runner-up San Diego State in the other Sweet 16 matchup. But uh, for my money, Alec, this is the best matchup of the Sweet 16. Maybe Creighton, Tennessee up there as well. So this is going to be a, a phenomenal one. It's hard to pick this one, right? Like I went back and forth of, of who I think uh, has the advantage here, but that, that's why I think it's such a good one. Yeah, I think it's great. And I think, you know, a lot of people are maybe complaining that there like wasn't a ton of upsets in the first weekend or double digit seats to get to the Sweet 16. Uh, don't count me in that group of people. I, I agree. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. Like last year, the final four last year was horrible. Like you had, I guess, one really good game. Uh, the San Diego State FAU game was awesome, but I'd rather watch Duke and Carolina like I did the year before um, in that same game just because of the brand, I guess. And you can call me a brand homer or whatever you'd like. Go ahead. But, uh, yeah, I, like, I think I like, that I like the best teams. I like the best programs at this point. I love the first round upsets, but at this point, give me the best games. That's what I want. Yeah, because I don't want to watch St. Peter's get 25 piece by UNC in the Elite Eight. Like UNC should not have had a path to the Final Four there. Not UNC team was talented. They ended up playing for a national title. But um, yeah, the, like UNC blasted St. Peter's. I don't, no one wants to see that. Um, yeah, I think that this game is up there. I think Tennessee, Creighton, like you said, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, I think that. Duke and Houston could be good if Duke plays hard. Um, I question Duke's toughness. I think that could be a really good one. Um, I think Bama and UNC could be a ton of fun from a scoring perspective. And then I think the game everyone wants to see this weekend, right, is, is Arizona UNC, Carolina Caleb going against his old team. Um, but yeah, I think that this is potentially the game of the Sweet 16 because styles make fights and everyone likes two opposite styles kind of going at each other and seeing which one comes out on top. And I am a big believer that like offense has a really good offense has the potential to be good defense in basketball just because shots go in for really good offensive teams. So we'll have to see if that kind of comes through for Illinois or if Iowa State's able to force enough stops. Yeah, it's a great test of the theory. Offense wins championships or defense wins championships. Brad Underwood kind of believes now in offense wins championships. We'll see. Uh, if that that happens this weekend, Alex Bussy, great insights. Cyclone alert! Uh, you can check them out on the uh, Iowa State twenty four seven Sports site. Great work as always, Alec. Appreciate your time, man. Yeah, man. Thanks a ton for having me on. I've uh, been listening to the pod since I was in school, so it's always cool to kind of go on somewhere where you've been listening for a long time. And certainly appreciate all of your advice and all of the uh, help that you've kind of given me throughout the years. Appreciate you, man. See you, at TD Garden. Yep.